Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a little bit different than what I typically do because it is going to be a book haul, like the title says, but it also is going to be a clothing haul. And I typically have only done bookish related things on this channel, but I kind of want to branch out and try something different just because I want this channel to be a really good representation of my life, the things I'm interested in, the things I'm passionate about, and clothes are one of them and it's something that I've been spending more time and money on recently, so I thought I would share that with you guys. Um, I'll kind of just go over it pretty quickly. I am in the process of building a capsule wardrobe. It's not something that you can get done in a day. So this has been like over a couple weeks. And then I've got a book stack right here that has also been similarly. You might've seen some of these books in some vlogs, but these are books that I have since gotten from my last book haul. So we're gonna start off with the books first and then I'll get to the clothes since this is a book channel. And if you're not here for the clothes, once the book portion is over, you don't have to finish watching it. So. Yeah, I'm going to get through all these books pretty quickly and then we're gonna get onto the clothes. It's gonna be a shorter video than normal. So the first book I got was The Demon King by Cinda Williams Chima. This is a Seven Realms novel. Um, I got this off of Amazon. It was a used, so that's why it doesn't have the dust jacket, but I kind of like the way it looks. Um, and I haven't heard much about it. I did see it in Br Brittany the Bibliophile's book vlogs from like a while back and i don't know the title the demon king just sounded really enticing so that's all i really know about it i don't know too much else and i have another book by cinda williams chima in here somewhere um that is kind of related to the series and i don't know much about that either but the demon king the next two books are fairy loot exclusives so these are exclusive additions to fairy loot and that would be incendiary by zareta cordova and girl serpent thorn by melissa basherdoust i believe that's how you pronounce it um so incendiary is like spanish inquisition spanish inquisition era inspired spain and we are following renata convita and she i believe is trying to escape her father the wrath of her father the king um but it has to do with like memory magic which i always thought was super interesting so this is definitely high up on my tbr and i'll hopefully be getting to in the month of july then for girl serpent thorn this was i believe in the desert dreams box um and this book we're following soraya and um I believe, and I believe in this book, we are following a princess whose touch is poisonous, which I always kind of thought was super interesting. I feel like it's a really cool adaptation and take on the Midas touch, I believe it is, where everything he touches turns to gold. Well, in this book, it's everything she touches, it's poisonous. It kills them. So I think that's very interesting. It has some light green sprayed edges. The next book I'm so excited about, and this is Ghosts of the Shadow Market by Cassandra Clare. So this I believe we're following Jem Carstairs, and these are kind of his adventures. It's a collection of short stories that follows the Infernal Devices. So I'm in the middle of the Infernal Devices series currently, I'm still listening to Clockwork Prince on audiobook, and I'll get through it eventually. But for right now, I wanted to pick this up because I love Jem, and I'm really, really getting into his character. The other book that I had picked up by Cinda Williams Chima was Flamecaster, and this is from the Shattered Realms series. So I believe this trilogy or series follows the Seven Realms. So it kind of alludes to something there, the Seven Realms, and then we have the Shattered Realms. Um, but I am super excited about this. And I don't know if you can read them without reading the other series first. Um, but this one says, A wizard prince in exile, thirsting for revenge, a girl with a curse striking back against a ruthless king. Together they will burn the kingdom to its rotten core. Which just sounds like a good time. So that's why I wanted to pick up some of Cinda Williams Chima's works. Cinda Williams Chimas. The next book is The Lash Magician by Lisa Maxwell. This has been on my Amazon wish list for I don't even know how long. And it says, Stop the magician, steal the book, save the future. In modern day New York, magic is all but extinct. The remaining few who have an affinity for magic, the mages, live in the shadows, hiding who they are. Any mages who enters Manhattan become trapped by the brink, a dark energy barrier that confines them to the island. Crossing it means losing their power and often their lives. So that's like the first little blurb. And um, 
my family is from New York, so I love any book set in New York, New Jersey, anything like that. And the beginning of this synopsis kind of reminded me of um, The Sorcerer's Apprentice, uh, which also takes place in New York. But I just believe it's a movie. I don't think there is a book that accompanies it, but I always loved that movie growing up, so. The next book is Damsel by Alana K. Arnold. I also got this book because of Brittany the Bibliophile. Um, it says, the right has existed for long as anyone can remember. When the king dies, his son, the prince, must venture out into the Grey Lands, slay a fierce dragon, and rescue a damsel to be his bride. And I basically believe this is a dark retelling of that typical fairy tale story that we see in so many Disney movies where there's a damsel in distress and she's being saved by a prince. Um, I do believe it is pretty um, dark and there were some trigger warnings for it if I read correctly, but it does look like it's quite a short book. So I'll let you guys know how I feel about this book when I read it. The next one is The Lantern's Ember by Colleen Hawk or Hook. Um, and it says, he has kept the darkest monsters and demons at bay for centuries. She is a bold, brilliant witch, dead set on slipping past him. The crossroad keepers may have finally met his match. And if I remember correctly, we are following a witch and like a witch hunter and their paths cross. I'm guessing there could be some enemy to lover romance in this book. I hope that's one of my favorite tropes. Um, and our main character, the witch's name is Ember, and I really like that name, so. Next, we have All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. This is a mermaid story. That's all I really know about it. Like, I believe we've got some mermaid aspect. It is like a we're at set at sea story, so that is really all I needed to know about it. And this was a Fairy Loot exclusive edition. Like, um, they Fairy Loot did an exclusive edition, but I wasn't, my subscription wasn't active at that point, so. I wanted to get a copy for myself. The next book is My Plain Jane, and this is by Cynthia Han, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. And I believe that this is just a modern retelling of Jane Eyre, which I have not actually read Jane Eyre. I don't believe I have it either. Yes, I do. I do have Jane Eyre and a combination of that and Wuthering Heights, which I love Wuthering Heights. Um, but it says a fantastic rom romantic comedic entirely but not really faithful retelling of Jane Eyre so I'm really excited to read this and maybe I'll get around to reading the real Jane Eyre first. The next book I got was A Blade So Black by L. L. McKinney and this was on a list of um, books by black authors that I had seen and it seemed really interesting. It is a retelling of The Queen of Hearts or Alice in Wonderland. Um, it's an Alice in Wonderland retelling. So it says, swords will shatter, hearts will break, heads will roll, drive back the dark. And it just sounds so interesting. Um, so I do believe our main character is, yeah, her name is Alice and it's set in real world Atlanta. So I thought that was kind of interesting and I'm super excited to read this. So we're getting down to the last final few. So the first one is Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Mass. I had been talking about wanting to get the hardcover edition of it and I finally did. It's heavy, really, really heavy. Like it feels like a Bible heavy. Um, and I'm so, so excited. I've been in the mood for Kingdom of Ash recently, which I mentioned at the beginning of June, but I just keep seeing more fan art of um, Manon and Dorian and even Lorcan and Illidy and I'm so excited to get my hands on this. And the last book is Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan and it says let them fear her. And this just says some stories are so beautiful, so brutal that they claw at your heart and refuse to let go. Welcome to the world of Wicked Saints, an epic, passionate novel you won't soon forget. Prepare to meet a girl named Nadia who hears the whispers of gods inside her head, a prince surrounded by desperate suitors and deadly assassins. A monster hidden behind pale, tortured eyes and a smile that cuts like a knife. The paths of these three characters become entwined during a centuries-long war filled with sinners and saints, magic and mystery, and a star-crossed romance that threatens to tip the scales between dark and light forever. That sounded so good. So that was the last book that I had recently purchased, and now we're going to get on to the clothing section. Okay, now we're on to the clothing portion, and my cousin's sitting over here, so if you hear noise, that's her. <laughs> Okay, so like I said at the beginning, this is... Alright, we're back, my camera battery died and we had a dance break, but I was saying about the capsule wardrobe, so you can see Rocco and we're gonna get into it because I've got kind of a lot of stuff. 
So the majority of the stuff that I bought was neutral colors. So whites, blacks, grays, nudes, and then like the colors that I like on me. So pinks, browns, oranges, and then like whatever I have in my closet too will build on this. So I guess I'm gonna start off with loungewear because I only got one piece of it. And, and then I'll keep going on with the same company. So this is from Nasty Gal and it's like um, a sweater and short set and I got it in gray. This is the way it's supposed to go. I got it in gray and I really like it just because when I was like, if I'm gonna do a capsule wardrobe, I guess I can do like pajamas and loungewear too. So I would gotten that and then I also got this pair of sweatpants, which a lot of the stuff still has tags on. Um, they're just like nude, so they're just nude like sweatpants. Um, and I wanted a pair of like basic sweatpant jogger type style that's like cream that I could wear with like a big t-shirt and sneakers and call it a day. So that's the other thing. And then, and then, and then, and then. And then the last thing I got from Nasty Gal was this t-shirt. Oh, I also got reds because I really like red. And it says Odyssey on it and it has like, I think there's a tiger? Yes, it has a tiger on it. And I really just liked this to tuck into like jeans or the sweatpants. And then I've got like Marshall's TJ Maxx just cause I only got two things from there. So the first thing is this white t-shirt from Caution to the Wind. And it's just like a boxy cropped shirt that I could wear with jeans or I really only wear jeans or shorts. And then this is another shirt from Urban Romantics. And they had a dress in a style like this that I really liked, but I don't wear dresses that often, so I got it in the top version. And this is just like a black basic top. So then the next company that I bought from was um, ASOS or ASOS. Still don't know how to pronounce it. It's been days. <laughs> And so I just got some basic stuff from them too. So I got this kind of differently cut white t-shirt. So it kind of cinches in more, which I liked. Um, and this is just from River Island. Just a basic white t-shirt. And then um, I got a nude one. This is like just like a tan kind of color. And then I got another graphic tee, and this one says more love, and it just has all the colors that I really like on it. It's like browns, yellows, kind of like a brown, reddish color. And then I bought a pair of jeans, which I was so surprised by the like um, size matcher on these because I couldn't go in and try them on. But I'm 5'7 and have like a 32 inch inseam. And they matched me perfectly just based on my height and my age and like your body type. And I was very surprised that these fit so well. So, and then I went to Target and just got a couple things because it's cheaper there and if I destroy them, I won't be mad. So this was just um, like a striped t-shirt. I have one that's kind of red, white, and blue, but it kind of reminds me of a sailor. And that wasn't the look I was going for. So I got this one that's more um, mauve and like coral and white. And I really liked this one. And then I bought another white t-shirt, but this one I think was like $8. And I bought it because first of all, it's really soft. And then I wanted to stress it. So I have a thread puller that I'm just gonna use. And I'll show you guys when I distress it, how it ends up looking. Just so I have some nice pieces and then some distressed pieces. But I couldn't find a distressed shirt that I liked, so I'm just gonna make it myself. Okay, and the last few things are just from two stores. So I went to um, Saks Off Fifth Avenue, which is like a Nordstrom's uh, or Nordstrom rack, and I got a free people sweater that was originally $108, and I paid $35 for it, which I'm not mad about. And I really liked this cardigan, and so it's just got like little cuffs, and it's brown, and it kind of looks slouchy and slumpy on, but that's what I was looking for. And then the last two things were from H&M, which I try not to buy from H&M too often. Um, they're usually my last resort just because I know that they're not um, the most sustainable. So I bought two things that I was looking for for weeks and I couldn't find any that I really liked. And the first one was 
a plain black with nothing on it, just some like cuff sleeves t-shirt dress. And this was, the reason I bought this one was because I couldn't find one that was long enough because I am very, very, very tall. So this one was only like $9 and that's why I justified it. And it's something that I'll use time and time again. It's pretty basic. And then this was what I was really looking for. I wanted an oversized blazer and this was on sale for $15.99. Usually jackets I get in a large just because they fit me the best and I'm usually wearing something under it, but it hits just around the butt and I really like it and it kind of looks not the cutest um, when you're just holding it up, but I was trying it on in the store the other day and I really liked it and it was only $15. And it was exactly what I was looking for. They have really nice blazers there just to put over any outfits. So that is all for the clothing and the book haul. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, sorry if it was long. Um, and if you did stick around to the end and you like the clothing haul, let me know because I can do more videos that aren't entirely bookish. So yes, I am planning on doing a journal with me spread video too because I finally almost have all my July spreads planned out. So look forward to that and I will have, I will try to link most of the books and clothes I talked about in the description box. But besides that, I think that's it. I hope you guys are all having a good day. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. <music>